will say something how the let's call it the more technical aspects of this uh, project went on that uh, resulted in the corpora um so from my point of view at least and i think from the point of view of usefulness uh, of the um, parla in corpora i think uh, the encoding is crucial here and that's what uh, most of the effort actually uh, went towards so that uh, all the corpora encoded as uniformly as possible because once we have that it's not just uh, um, kind of that we just want that because it looks nice but once we do have a uniform encoding it means we can run the same scripts then over any of the 17 currently corpora uh, and that we get the same results afterwards uh, and we made quite a, a bit of uh, quite a few of these uh, various scripts for conversion for instance i will get into details a bit later and this was quite a difficult process right because First of all, uh, the sources that uh, the, the project partners got their data from are, of course, uh, encoded in very, very different ways, from JSON to XML to plain text, uh, HTML, you name it, one of the countries had it. Uh, and um, <clears throat> the structure of, these, uh, of this information, of these debates was very different. They contain different information. And last but not least here, they reflect different parliamentary traditions. We don't have just one parliament or type of parliament in Europe, but many different types of parliament, each one of their different traditions. So the transcripts are structured quite a bit differently as well. Um, and uh, yes, well, uh, each corpus was produced by a separate partner, which is also problematic because uh, uh, if you have just one partner, they have their kind of special things or they, they make a mistake. Uh, and uh, you try to fix it or discuss it with them. But if you have 17 corpora, then well, each one will have their own special things and will make their own mistakes. So unifying this is well, quite a big job. Uh, so uh, for the project, the definition of uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, rich, so expressive format that can incorporate all the metadata, data, linguistic annotation that we wanted to put in. And on the other hand, this constraint that you can use the same scripts to, to convert it is uh, crucial. Uh, we do have some tradition in developing this kind of common format. And Matsya already mentioned this uh, Clarin Parla format uh, workshop that took place in 2019. And there, uh, me and Andrei Panchur, also from Slovenia, um, we presented this idea that we have how to encode parliamentary corpora because we already uh, had a couple of uh, versions of the parliamentary corpus for Slovenian. And uh, the essential idea here is very simple. You just use TDI. Uh, so that's what we presented. And we made a customization of the TI guidelines, which you can find here on uh, GitHub. And the customization is called Parla Clarin. Now, the customization itself is nothing special. It's kind of uh, allows for very, very different types of information to be encoded, because those of you that know about TI know that it, uh, it is pretty general, and it is not prescriptive, it is descriptive. So it means that the same phenomenon can be encoded in different ways. So the customization itself, so the formal schema is nothing special. However, we did put a lot of effort into writing the prose annotation guidelines, where you have examples of the corpora, how you're supposed to encode them according to Parla Clarin, um, also some other uh, well-known formats, um, uh, and how it relates, how they relate to Parla Clarin, and also some things which are not uh, don't, are not really a part of the schema. But for instance, what should file names look like, what the character set is, and how you can, which uh, character you're supposed to watch out for, and so on. Right. So we put a lot of effort into the into the um, guidelines. And uh, down here you have the first corpus, which was actually uh, encoded according to Parla Clarin, and that's our second version of CPARL, so uh, the Slovenian, uh, the corpus of Slovenian parliamentary debates, uh, which goes from, uh, well, it has almost 30 years of data in it. So uh, how we approach the whole thing in Parliament, uh, so, as I said, we had this Parla Clarin guidelines. We had a very, very general schema. So at the start for version one, where we had just four corpora, we started just with Parla Clarin. 
And then as the data came in, we discussed and unified the encoding of these four corpora until we actually came to something that we considered was good enough for version one of the corpora. And then the, the new countries came in. Uh, and of course, new problems came in because they had different, uh, well, different information. They wanted to encode different information, some that we didn't yet have in our corpora, some was uh, framed differently. So we went through this cyclic process, which actually lasted almost until the end of the project, where we did successive modifications of the encoding. So we tried to unify various practices uh, and incorporate corpus specific information. Uh, and at the same time, we also changed or tightened up the schema. Now for Parliament, we actually gave up on TI, proper TI, uh, but just made bespoke uh, schemas for Parliament. So they're written directly in LexNG uh, so that we could uh, exercise maximal control over what we allow uh, in the corpora, which is not to say that our corpora are not TEI. So each corpus is validated against Parla Clarin as well as against our Parliament schemas. Uh, it turned out that just having schemas is actually not enough. You want further validation. And for this, we wrote XSLT scripts that uh, report on various errors or inconsistencies. Um, so that was kind of second level validation. And then we had the, the third level validation, which is functional validation. So we converted uh, the original TI encoding into various uh, derived formats, uh, in particular, the Connell U uh, format, which is used by universal dependencies. And once we convert it into Connell U, then you can use the universal dependencies validation script to do validation and discover errors that you maybe didn't in the XML. And similarly, we convert it to vertical files, which are uh, a type of files which are then used by sketch engine, no sketch engine context CQP. Uh, so these concordancers, uh, this family of concordancers, and then when you do conversion, the log file will again show some errors. When you index it for the concordancer, again, it can show some errors. And finally, once you have it in the concordancer and you look at it again, you can spot some errors. So we went through all this uh, uh, three level validation a couple of times until we uh, came to what is the current version, which is 2.1. Uh, but of course, in the meantime, we did find some other bugs. Uh, and I think in a, in a project of this size, uh, so many corporates so large, there will always be some bugs, but we do report on them on our uh, GitHub. Uh, so that the whole thing is not completely up in the air. Um, here you have uh, the next couple of slides. Um, just a second. Okay. The next couple of slides are examples of what we actually have in the corpora in this uh, TI Parliament Parla Clarin encoding. So this is the corpus title statement of the Czech corpus. And here you can see that, well, you have the title, uh, you have references to what kind of uh, meetings. So that's a general statement, but in this case, it means which terms of the Czech Parliament uh, the, the corpus actually covers. So it says here that it is, uh, that these are terms, that they belong to the lower house of the Czech parliament, and that they are the seventh and eighth mandate, yeah, through these pointers on the meeting elements. Uh, one other thing to notice is that we made quite a bit of an effort to actually have the metadata both in uh, English and in the local language, whatever that is. And then you can see some responsibility statements who actually did the work on this corpus. Uh, here we see uh, an example of a transcription. Uh, this is from the Italian parliament. So what we have are divisions, which are called debate sections. Uh, they can have some head. Uh, we can have notes in them, uh, which are taken from the, um, from the original transcription, but are marked up here so they don't, they don't kind of conflict with the actual uh, transcription of what people said. And then we have this U element, meaning utterance. Uh, we mark it uh, that this was the chair speaking, who is the person speaking. Um, and then again, we can mark up kind of transcriber notes in this, in this case, an incident, um, which is of type action. So this is something we actually haven't 
uh, gotten very far in unifying. Uh, down, you have another kin kinesic incident, which is applause. And in between, you have these segments, which are, uh, in fact, what people are, are talking about. Uh, here we have linguistic annotation. So this this is essentially the same as you saw before, except that you have lots of linguistic annotation added. So this is actually a sentence from the Turkish parliament, which has just three, three tokens in it. Uh, so two words and one punctuation symbol, and all the rest is, is linguistic annotation. So for each word, we know what its universal uh, dependencies part of speech tag is, what the morphological features are, what the lemma is. Um, and that's that in this case. And then in the link group, we also have the syntactic annotation. So the, the dependencies uh, uh, according to the universal dependencies uh, system. So uh, I will tell you a bit how the corpus compilation actually went. Uh, but I already mentioned this. So each partner produced their corpus. Uh, I already mentioned that the initial corpora that the people submitted each had their own mistakes and problems. Uh, so we had lots of communication going on. Uh, at the beginning, I thought we could all do it via GitHub and we did. So we there had 70, 70 issues. Uh, there's about 500 commits. Uh, but quite a few people actually preferred emails, it turned out. Uh, so I, I counted uh, a couple of days ago. So there was, I wrote 200 emails to various partners so that we could fix errors and so on. So I was the kind of central services uh, guy here taking care that things are hopefully uh, uniformly and harmoniously annotated. Uh, the last thing I did is for the release is make a script that there were still like little mistakes remaining so that the, it polishes uh, each corpus. Um, and I already mentioned, yeah, uh, we did quite a few uh, conversions into, into other formats uh, with XSLT scripts. So what is, uh, what did we get out of all this? Uh, we have 17 corpora for the countries you see here. Uh, and they have altogether 16 languages because Belgium is actually French plus Dutch. So this is currently the only bilingual corpus we have, uh, but the rest kind of correspond to their country. Uh, altogether, this is uh, 22,000 files, uh, 5 million speeches and uh, half a billion words. Um, 3,600 speakers uh, and well, 1,000, almost 1,700 organizations. And by organizations, I mean encoded political parties or depending on the, on the parliament, some people also encoded various committees and so on. Uh, the data spans, uh, this depends on the actual parliament, on the actual corpus, but uh, Turkish, I think, goes all the way back to 2011. Uh, and the corpus that has kind of the, the shortest period, I think this is French actually, uh, goes from, from 2017, the middle of the year onwards, and they go at least to mid-2020, uh, and in one case, and again, I think this is Turkish, it goes to uh, April 2021. <coughs> Sorry, and down here you see kind of a, a two graphs. One is uh, that gives you uh, the time span, yeah, and how much data there is uh, according to the month and the country. Of course, the country you can't really distinguish here very well. Uh, and the second one is how large the complete corpus is in words. Uh, and here you can see there is lots of variation, yeah. So by far the largest is the UK parliament, uh, in part also because it, is, uh, it has quite a long time span but also uh, they have uh, the lower, so the, the, the commons and the lords yeah, in their, in their uh, terminology, so lower and upper house uh, transcriptions on it. Well, the smallest one is the Hungarian because I think they, they have a relatively short time span, but also they encoded only uh, plenary speeches in their corpus. So the variation here is quite large. So the final result of the project is Parliament 2.1. We had three releases, uh, 1.0, 2.0, which was a kind of test uh, release for the final one to iron out, uh, well, various problems that we could see. 
Uh, and a lot of the development went on on GitHub and here is the, the address. So what you have there is all the scripts that we use, the schemas that we use, as well as sample files in the original XML and all the derived formats that we produce. You can all find them there. In an ideal world, we would have the complete corpora there, but they're just simply too large to put on, on GitHub uh, because, well, uh, half a billion words with all the uh, linguistic annotations is, is huge, uh, about 20 gigabytes, I think. So that's not something you can do on Git. So, but what, what you do have here is all the machinery and samples for everything. So it's a nice place to have a look at what the whole thing looks like. The complete corpora are in the Clarin uh, Slovenian Clarin repository under these two handles. Uh, and what you can find there is uh, two times, yeah, because we distinguish the linguistically annotated corpus from the corpus which has everything in it except the linguistic annotations. So there are two different entries. So two times 17 corpora, uh, they're packed in tarred uh, and uh, GNU zipped files. And then each of these uh, compressed bit streams has in them, uh, well, uh, not each one, but all together, sorry, uh, 22,000, sorry, there's one zero missing here, files uh, for each um, variant, annotated and unannotated. And each file is present there in five versions. So the original XML, uh, and then derived formats, which are uh, tab separated metadata for each speech, uh, plain text of the speeches uh, with the ID of the speech. So you can link it up to the metadata because some people just prefer plain text without all the TI junk, uh, yeah. Then we have the kernel U files, which are already mentioned and the vertical files, which you can mount on the on a, a CQP, uh, CQP type concordance. The last slide, uh, I should very much stress here that this was, uh, I mean, I worked a lot here, but 90% of the work uh, went to the people that you see here listed as authors. So uh, the, the project partners, which in fact had to produce the complete corpus uh, and also linguistically annotated. So on this screen, you have the final result and you can download them. So both entries are under uh, CC BY. So uh, actually no, no great restrictions on the, on the use of the corpora. And uh, yeah, with this, I would also close. Thank you very much.